Hey everybody, Phil Trop Gun here. Just a quick little video, we're gonna show how I make a three-dimensional target, come up with a great way to make a, a 3D reactionary target out of three standard USPSA cardboard silhouettes. Check it out. Okay, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do I usually use USPSA targets. Quick way you can tell between USPSA and IDPA is USPSAs have a white side, IDPA or brown on both sides. I use the USPSA target for one reason and one reason only. They're typically the same price, but if you're familiar with the targets, the USPSA scoring zones, the A zone is a straight line. It's gonna become really important. You can also do this with IDPA targets. It's just a little bit easier with USPSA targets. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna take my first target, set it aside. That one's gonna stay flat. It's gonna be my flat target. Then I need to bend two USPSA targets. And all I'm going to do is the neckline. So straight from the neckline and then straight down across the A zone. I simply wanna take the target and bend it. And usually it's gonna, gonna, I don't need any additional help or anything else to bend it. I just wanna bend it over. Basically like creating a fold. It's kinda of like tactical origami, something like that. Same thing on the other side. So I just find that A zone, put my fingers there. Fold the target right over it. Just kind of crease it so that it stays. I want to get two targets set up just like that. And you don't have to worry about being precise. This isn't a precise science. This is something you can do really quick and fast. If you want to get fancy, if you want to get a straight edge out and make your lines nice and perfect, be my guest. So basically what I want to do here is fold my wings up, brown side up, and have two targets set up with wings. Now I'm ready to go. Okay, so I've got my flat target and I've got my two targets uh, folded up, done my tactical origami here and I got them ready to go. I'm gonna need to get the next portion of my supplies which is a plain Jane old office stapler. Yep, you can use heavy duty staplers if you've got them, if you've got those real long reach staplers, those work even better. But I just needed a plain old office stapler and that'll get the job done. So what I'm gonna do is take the two folded targets and basically just line them up, wing to wing, so that those two wings line all the edges up just like that, okay? And as I line those edges up, I just start to staple them and tack. And for sake of this video, I'm just gonna put a couple tacks in so they hold. Um, you can do as many as you want. Staples are dirt cheap, so I will typically do quite a few, but that gives you an idea there. Now, as you can see, as I start to, I'm already beginning to mold that shape. I can begin, begin to see if I turn it here a little bit. You're starting to see where my cavity is going to be created and where some of my three-dimensional shape is going to come from. And as it's flat on the table, it also lets me know that's exactly where I'm going to put my target. So I come back in with my third target now. So this is my flat target, the one I did not fold. And I'm simply going to set my targets back on that and line edge to edge up, just like this. It's going to create a triangular cavity. So as I line edge to edge up on each of the targets, same treatment. Just gonna throw some staples in them, get it at least going. And I'm going quick here. You can take your time and make this target nice and fancy. Remember, all we're gonna do is shoot it anyway. For this first set of staples, all I do is just sink them real close to the, to the edge. I don't have to go in real deep. So I'm gonna do that around both sides. Line my edges up. And tack them in. Now you can already start to see, I now have a target that free stands, stands up, has that triangular cavity in it. Back it up here in a minute and show it to you. But you can begin to see it's taking shape. A Couple of quick points here now. I have the three stapled edges and I'll worry about the head here in a second, I'll show you some tricks. A few things I've found out, remember, if we're gonna use this as a reactionary target, we're gonna be stuffing balloons into it up to, up to the upper thoracic cavity up in this area putting a, a two by four or a two by two in here on a target stand, then as we break the balloons, the targets will naturally drop. So what I wanna do is the natural uh, tendency is for this target to pry apart here. So at all my interior angles, I wanna reinforce them with a couple staples. And I wanna go as deep as the stapler will allow me to get. So I wanna go as far in. That's why I said if you have those industrial 
staplers that, that push all the way through with bigger staples that clamp, they're even better. I also want to flip the stapler. That way it's securing from both sides. So I want to tack a couple in. Basically what I'm doing is having the flat side of the staple go on both ends. So I can do that around each of the angles. And I want to focus top and bottom and go as deep as I possibly can. Again, flip the stapler. Same thing. And I'd put a couple more in there. You can reinforce this with tape if you want to get fancy. I've even done this target already with spray adhesive and use spray adhesive on the wings. I will tell you with the spray adhesive, unless you have really good spray adhesive, it's usually going to break the more balloons you stuff in there. Now the last thing that I do is the head. So if you look here, the head still stays open and kind of flaps around. So if I just take this at the top corner here and kind of pinch it together, pinch that together just enough to get a couple staples in there, overlap those staples. If I do that on all three corners, just pinch it enough, get a couple staples in there. Pinch that flat, and I've got enough slack in it that I can do it. Get a couple staples in. Now, that's it. That's all. Gives me a flat. Okay, so here you have it. Um, completed three-dimensional target. Uh, has the ability to be engaged from any side. Uh, it gives me a little bit of depth. Um, Width-wise, you can see, you know, torso width-wise. Okay, so... One of the, the best things to do with this target now, we can put it in a lot of different types of carriers and situations. It can be reactive, it can be static. But just like, a, like I've talked about with flat targets before, I like to throw a shirt on. It gives it even more depth. And if I have a hat, I throw a hat on. So I take the target, nothing more than throwing a little shirt over top. Like dressing a two-year-old, only easier. Just got to get that shirt over the, uh, the angles, pull it down, a little love for Ranger up on top of it and make awesome shirts. Okay, so now I have a three-dimensional package, take away any of it, gives it a, a little bit more depth as I turn the target. When we talk about anatomical indexing and, and where we're looking to aim, I can work that in three dimension and I can set this target up and I can shoot from the side. I can shoot it from the back. It can react. It can drop. I hope you found this video helpful. For a couple of bucks and about five minutes of your time, you can create yourself a three-dimensional reactive target. Give it a try.